to the regular meeting of the Los Angeles City Council's Planning and Land Use Management Committee. My name is Marquise Harris-Dawson. I'm the council member for the 8th District and serve as chair of this committee. Joined by committee members uh, Mr. Smith of the San Fernando Valley, Mr. Blumenfeld of the San Fernando Valley, Mr. Cedillo of Pico Union and parts nearby. You first. <laughs> MacArthur Park and on and on and on. Um, we begin this meeting as we do all meetings with the uh, folks who've signed up for multiple comments. You'll be able to speak for two minutes. Uh, two minutes you'll be able to speak. I have three such speakers. Uh, one of them is named Herman, another is named Wayne, and another one is named Yvonne. If you could come in any order to the lectern, center of the room, begin sharing with us your comments on matters in the jurisdiction of this committee. If you're not familiar with the city of Los Angeles, how it engages on the Venice investment situation, let me bring this to your attention. Fuck the Los Angeles Superior Court. Who the fuck are they? We're telling people how, when, and where they're not going to have open public comment. Why are you doing this? Why are you suppressing people from participation? How many fucking years? Why? Why are you doing this, LA? People don't want this fucking shit. But you're letting the judge and those lawyers absorb our fucking money without a result of settling the situation of the dispute. People versus LA, fuck you. In addition to property located this at begins your general public comment. South, South Abbott, Kinney, Boulevard, nigga, I am talking about the statement that I'm submitting for the record which on this paper says community impact support, not. In addition to that, I want to advise you as Plum that you have no right asking us what permit or policies or practice you want us to follow. Because you allowed Jose Weizar and his fucking crew of malicious Goddamn developers to steal our fucking money and launder it through Salesian High School, the Catholic Church. Fuck the Catholic Church, and I hope you go to hell with me. Six, six, six. That's your time. What about my general public please comment? Take your, please take your seat. You've exhausted general public comment and multiple comments. We'll see you next uh, meeting. I just want to say, it's, you know, it's so important that we uh, create more affordable housing, uh, edifice more affordable housing. I've been a resident of downtown for 16 years in April, and under the regentrification or during regentrification, what I would assume uh, would be redevelopment or development of uh, or creating more affordable housing units. In lieu of that, actually, I see the city has sold us, us out yet again and redeveloping either uh, condemned buildings or creating uh, space for upper to upper middle class condominiums, micro lofts, and lofts. Some exclusive, not even allowing the five to 20 uh, per, uh, uh, affordable, house, affordable units within those redevelopment spaces. So I would advocate, you know, that you're not so open, of course, in selling us out. This is still a democracy. And I would think that the first priority would be to give uh, housing to veterans. I still see veterans in the street, which is just horrible in one of the richest cities in the world. Thank God, under the uh, Obama administration, I'm not having to give money that I really don't even have to homeless veterans. Okay, and I still am tired of seeing so many black people in the street. Black people built this country. Okay, and I'm not a racist, but when I go to the 99 cent store and there are women that speak Spanish with no citizenship or, and, and they have jobs. And I'm not speaking against Hispanic people. I'm speaking against the city 
house the homeless who are predominantly black, even some veterans, that's your <coughs> priority, not just to your money-making ventures, whether it's with billionaire Chinese redevelopers, uh, Jewish developers, whoever. Take care of this blight that you have engineered, and you know it's engineered, civil engineering, and extermination of those people that you have placed in the trash is undesirable. Thank you. Get ourselves fancy toes up here. My quizzy, now known as my quizzy, Weezard Dawson, giving us niggas only two minutes to talk on all these items. Now that ain't right, and the Jews know it ain't right, but we're gonna proceed as we can. And then the number two, the drug addict Mike Bonin continues not to abide by what we want. A street easement for Venice Boulevard. If you want Venice Boulevard, buy it. Just go ahead. The developer can just buy Venice Boulevard. Don't give it for free. I know you gave Mike Bond and all that drugs, but he already used it, so please resupply him tonight, and you might get this item completed. And then we get out of this other shit. We support number... Three and all the CD1 items are now approved, and that's the reason why Gilbert is knocking at his paper because he knows the underground mafia is going to get all that shit built in his district. The underground mafia, not your regular mafia, the mafia you never going to find. Even Greg Smith's not going to find the underground mafia. But we got the above ground mafia, and that Jose Weezer, that fucking piece of shit brought the FBI into this building. I want you all to go up there and go, Weezy, you ain't easy. You a another fucking foe. Uneducated asshole Jose Weezer, rapist Jose Weezer, drunk Jose Weezer, thief Jose Weezer, snitch Jose Weezer, no more Weezer. Get his ass and cut his motherfucking mother ass out of here and back down to Zacatec. Is that piece of shit motherfucker? That concludes your time. Let me take your seat with all deliberate speed. Please do not disrupt the meeting again. That's your first and last warning. All right, beginning our uh, agenda, Mr. Mejia, I have um, a request on item number nine and item number two to continue those items, item number nine to June 11th. That's right, Council. And item number two to March 5th. Yes, 2019. Sir. That's correct. So without objection, that'll be the order on uh, both of those. Uh, and then if we can um, begin with item number four. Item number four. Uh, yes, you can read that into the record. Yes, Councilman. Item four is a report. Um, from the Cultural Heritage Commission, it's relative to the inclusion of the AP Carter residence as a historic cultural monument located in CD4. Now I'll ask our colleagues if we can take this, this, this matter up after we hear from Mr. Bernstein. <laughs> Thank you, council members. Ken Bernstein with um, Department of City Planning and Office of Historic Resources. The AP Carter residence was found to meet one of the cultural heritage ordinance criteria as uh, embodying the distinctive characteristics of the American colonial revival architectural style. The nomination um, was unanimously supported by the Cultural Heritage Commission and was submitted by the property owner as an applicant. Excellent. Uh, and on number four, we have no public comment speakers, so um, I request that we take this item on consent. Yes, Council. Hearing no objection, that'll be the order. Uh, let the record show that we've been joined by Councilmember Price uh, for a full complement of committee members. Mr. Price, representative of District Number Nine of Vermont Square, Green Meadows, and Avalon Gardens, fame. <laughs> um, 
Scott's getting a call. Um, item number five. Item five, Councilman. This is a motion by Councilman Krikorian O'Farrell. It's instructing the city planning department along with the city attorney and building and safety to prepare and present an ordinance to uh, regulate the conditions as it applies uh, to alcohol establishments that do not have a CUP. Excellent. So I believe we'll hear from Ms. Nathanson on this. Hi, Erin Coleman, Department of City Planning. Uh, Phyllis couldn't make it today, so okay. I'm here on her behalf. Welcome. Um, so we're um, happy to begin working on this ordinance um, uh, once pending Plum's action today and approval by council. Um, so basically our understanding is that this ordinance would address uh, nuisance operators and bring operators into um, the land use process for um, alcohol establishments um, that um, are grandfathered in, currently do not have, uh, have not gone through the CUP process. Um, there are a couple other um, alcohol-related initiatives as well. So the department's currently working on the restaurant beverage program. Um, we've had two public hearings on, on this and um, are working on our recommendation report to CPC. Um, there's also um, another motion um, on the alcohol-restricted use subdistricts overlay. Um, that has not yet been directed to um, the Department of City Planning yet. Okay, and what's the timeline? What's your expected timeline on this? If, um, you, if, for assuming the, we act today. For the um, grandfathered alcohol establishments? Yep. Um, well, it, it, it would be pending um, action by city council. Um, and so it's not yet been directed to Department of City Planning to begin work. Um, we don't have a set timeline yet. Um, once it's directed to us, then we'll um, work out the timeline with our other uh, priorities as well. Okay. Um, okay, we should think about that because that's rather, rather open-ended. Yes. Arthur Barmer with the Planning Department. We're happy to uh, work on a timeline to uh, move forward with the ordinance once it's uh, initiated. Okay. Uh, okay. Hopefully we can... Uh, add something to this to our conversation today that puts some boundaries on the on the timeline we've got um, if you all can uh, hang with us for a minute we've got a few public comment speakers and, and perhaps uh, there will be issues that uh, you all can speak to uh, you all have at least one minute each to speak on uh, this matter Socorro Chacon Myra Jimenez Leonard Leo Ruiz Diane Cruz and Charles Porter Good afternoon, my name is Socorro Chacon and I work for Social Model Recovery System, an organization with more than 20 years of experiences or experience working with residents to improve public health and reduce alcohol and other drug related problems in Boyle Heights and Lincoln Heights. Today I'm here on behalf of our coalition members who support the proposed DEM approved ordinance, Council File 17-0957. A major issue for our coalition is liquor stores that allow the nuisance activity, such panhandling, loitering, sales to minors. Most of these stores have existed for many, many years and do not have operating standards. The proposed DEM approved ordinance will create operational standards for alcohol outlets and will help to reduce nuisance activities in and around these locations. Um, this is a major step forward in improving our communities, so please support this much needed ordinance. Thank, Thank you. you. Hello, committee members. My name is Mayra Jimenez. I'm here with Alcohol Justice and the Los Angeles Drug and Alcohol Policy Alliance. Uh, we support the deemed approved ordinance. We would like a consideration for looking at the alcohol specific conditions that the city attorney has deemed purview of the state. Um, and has neglected for the city to really consider. And this is one of the big components of looking at deemed approved, so we ask that this be a big consideration is looking at the alcohol-specific conditions in order to truly lead by example um, on, 
putting an ordinance in place that would address the whole issue of uh, compliancy that we understand is a huge challenge for us here in the city. Thank you. Good afternoon, my name is Dina Cruz and I am from Boyle Heights. I also have the honor to serve on the uh, Boyle Heights Neighborhood Council as the Area 2 Rep. And I want to, um, it's refreshing to hear that this is starting to be uh, discussed because too often we have the grandfathered alcohol outlets that are not informed on what being a good operator is this is going to give an, an exciting uh, opportunity for um, those operators to not only have standards but be informed on how to be how to be good operators. So this is very important, and so I strongly support this ordinance. Thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Leo Reese. I live and work in the city of Los Angeles. Uh, it should be noted that the number of alcohol outlets in Los Angeles is disproportionate and excessive. We all know that an excessive amount of alcohol sales has shown to increase crime violence, um, such as including drunk driving, domestic violence, assaults, public uh, intoxication, urination, panhandling, and loitering. Therefore, I am here to ask for your support on the proposed deemed approved ordinance, um, Council File 170957. This ordinance will establish operating standards for all existing alcohol outlets that did not have a CUP, which are the majority. It can have a positive impact in our communities. More importantly, it will make businesses responsible for the problems occurring adjacent to their location. Thank you very much for your time and consideration. Thank you. Good afternoon, committee members. Um, my name is Charles Porter. So I'm also a social model. I work with United Coalition East, which is in the Skid Row uh, community. Um, and uh, our experience has shown in trying to clean up some of the nuisance locations in Skid Row. Sometimes it drags on more than a decade, and that's with community concern and opposition. So this uh, ordinance will be a, a tool to give more leverage to enhance accountability, um, particularly in the context of uh, people revisiting community plans. I think it's long overdue that we, um, that we have this ordinance in place. Um, as it will also help to address disparities and community problems uh, associated with uh, the sales of alcohol. Um, so we ask that you support this ordinance and that you, um, as I mentioned, give an increased tool to community members so we can hold business owners accountable and uh, to enhance uh, health and wellness uh, in the cities throughout Los Angeles. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any uh, questions or comments, members? Uh, sink, yes, sir. I'm sorry, thank you. We have problems with uh, pallet manufacturing. And I really have a desire to try to put some limits, some controls, health and safety controls on these facilities that are grandfathered in, you know, yet are spilling out into the streets with, uh, with uh, uh, pallets and other equipment. How can we address these grandfathered situations? Uh, I, I'm, I'm happy that we're taking the, the action on alcohol, but are there any other kind of uh, zoning issues that, uh, that can be addressed? Yes, good afternoon, Councilman. This is Lisa Weber with City Planning. So we do have a uh, nuisance abatement and revocation uh, program as part of the Department of City Planning where we can look into the uh, status of those properties and also work with our counterparts at the Department of Building and Safety. Thank you. Maybe, uh, this is Kevin Keller, City Planning. I think we do do a lot of uh, updated zoning for our community plans, but existing valid and legal businesses are allowed to remain as long as they don't expand over a thir certain threshold. So number one, we want to make sure if it's, a, if it's a neighborhood level, we have the proper zoning in place for future. And then if there are some uh, properties that are um, properties of interest that we can be looking at, we want to make sure we look at existing codes. Um, uh, Deputy Director Weber does state that we do have a revocation process that is something for the most extreme examples, but um, and, and a little bit time consuming. But we um, have found often that um, adopting a new zone, even a lot of existing owners are, are, are able to bring themselves into that new regulation. But it's more of an optional process for existing legal operators. Okay, thank you. Mr. Chairman, I'm to, uh, 
totally supportive of this, uh, this motion. Appreciate it. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Price. Uh, early, uh, before public comment, you talked about the relationship between this um, matter and the restaurant uh, matter. Uh, could you talk more about how you see those things working together? Sure. I, I think that the scope is different in terms of um, applicability. So for the restaurant beverage program, um, the, um, the program itself is limited to restaurants with operational kitchens um, and, and establishments meeting a set of standards and criteria. So in terms of the um, deemed to be approved um, ordinance, um, the, the applicability is very different because you're looking at um, establishments that were grandfathered without going through um, this UP process. Um, so I, I think you're really targeting different types of establishments with these ordinances. Okay. Uh, I was just going to add, uh, Arthi Varma, the planning department, that uh, that is a separate work effort that's underway already. We're happy to, this is a new ordinance coming before us for initiation. Once it's initiated, we'd be happy to report back on a timeline understanding the priority of the ordinance. So, okay, thank you for that. I, I uh, remember the public hearings we had on this and there was a, quite a spirited debate where community members felt like they definitely wanted restaurants, sit down restaurants to be able to access uh, the, the ability to sell beer and wine in particular more quickly and more efficiently and without as big a, a weight in cost, but had trouble with that given the number of alcohol and other businesses that seem like they get to continue to operate without uh, much oversight or enforcement from the city. And so it seems like this addresses that, but I just want to go on record to make sure um, to memorialize those, the comments and the sentiments that folks expressed, uh, particularly from districts like uh, Mr. Price's and mine, uh, where you know there are, there are a lot of problem businesses and there have been problem businesses for years, uh, and there doesn't seem to be much being done about them. And the nuisance abatement process um, doesn't seem to be a, a ready-made tool uh, for folks to deal with those in any kinds of way. Really not a yeah, it's certainly not a speedy tool. And you know, th th again, you have situations where, you know, I have a alcohol outlet in my district that w we've lost count of how many people have been murdered at the site. And you know that that location has been in the nuisance abatement process for over 10 years. Uh, and so folks want to feel like that's going to get dealt with before we open the door to more of these kinds of businesses. So for, so it's important to, uh, I just want to go on record to indicate how those things hang together for the community. So thank you for pointing that out in the outset. And so um, uh, members, I'll ask that we approve this uh, and I'll just make a, 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 an amendment that we uh, get a report back in 30 days on, on what the timeline will be. And, um, and we'll go from there. Hearing no objection, that'll be the order. Um, that takes us to our next item, and we'll thank both of you for being here. Um, item number six, Mr. Mejia. <clears throat> item six, Councilman, this is a report from the Cultural Heritage Commission. It's relative to the inclusion of the Apera Momonga Mission Trail as a historic cultural monument in CD12. Again, Ken Bernstein, Department of City Planning and Office of Historic Resources. The uh, Petamamunga uh, Mission Trail was found to meet one of the Cultural Heritage Ordinance criteria for its association with the history of the Native American villages of Achoy Cominga and Mamanga as a route between those villages and for its association with the historic network of trails that connected the San Fernando and Ventura missions during California's mission period from eight, uh, 1769 to 1833. This would actually be the first historic cultural monument uh, designed, uh, designated specifically for its association with El Camino Real in the city of Los Angeles and the trails connecting California's statewide ne uh, network of missions, presidios, and pueblos. So the uh, uh, Cultural Heritage Commission unanimously recommended approval. Um, we have also been working with Council District 12 uh, to address issues um, and concerns that were, had been raised by the Department of Water and Power, and I think there is uh, some clarifying language um, as a result of those discussions. Happy to answer any questions. Excellent. Thank you, Mr. Bernstein. Mr. Smith. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So I do need to read into the record a statement uh, to clarify the issue of the Department of Water and Power. 
Consistent with section 22.171.11, the commission shall take all steps necessary to preserve mount monuments not in conflict with the public health, safety, and general welfare, powers and duties of the city of Los Angeles or its boards, officers, or departments. The city of Los Angeles Department of Water and Power, LADWP, either owns or has interest in significant portion of the real property along the trail. This includes underground water conveyances, structures, and their associated above ground appurtenances owned within and adjacent to the trail, as well as those leased from the Metropolitan Water District. LADWP has the powers and duties under the Los Angeles City Charter to operate maintain water power systems for the benefit of the residents of Los Angeles. The infrastructure located in the vicinity of the trail is necessary to provide reliable water supply to the entire western San Fernando Valley. The operation of the water and power systems requires LADWP regularly to access infrastructure in the vicinity of the trail and to occasionally construct new facilities on its property along and in the vicinity of the trail. Inherent in the exercise of these duties, LADWP reserves the right to occasionally interrupt the public access where and when deemed appropriate for the reasons of public safety or security or its utility system, systems. Such actions are necessary for public health, safety, and general welfare, and nothing in this designation is intended to interfere with these powers and duties. Nothing in the preceding paragraphs is intended to relieve LADWP from complying with applicable local, state, and federal requirements involving the trail. At present, LADWP has three individual projects scheduled for construction over the next decades or in within the vicinity of the trail, including number one, the DeSoto tank and pump re station project, number two, Rinaldi trunk line replacement project, and number three, Granada trunk line replacement project. These projects will not interfere with the designation of the trail as a monument and are recognized by the committee and the council as necessary infrastructure improvements and solely under the purview of the Board of Power, Water and Power Commissioners. Mr. Chairman, that solves the problem with water and power, and I think we uh, can go forward and ask for your support. Excellent. So uh, you're, you're recommending that we approve this item. Yes, sir. Uh, given what you put on the record, so I'll second that. Hearing no objection, that'll be the order. Excellent. So uh, that takes us to item number seven. Uh, yes, Councilman. Item seven, um, it's a report from the Board of Building and Safety Commissioners. It relates to um, an application to export 8,790 cubic yards of earth from the property located, for the property rather, located at 1314 through 1320 West Court Street, in, located in CD1. All right, and we're set to receive some information from folks from Building and Safety. Okinawa Building and Safety. This haul route was heard and approved by the Board of Building and Safety Commission on January 29th, 2019. They accepted the MND as previously adopted by City Planning. And the appeal is with regard to the hauling hours. They would like to start at 7 a.m. when the staff report requires it to start at 9 a.m. Um, staff recommends it to stay at the 9 a.m. hours as it is stated in the DOT letter and within the mitigated negative declaration. We're available to answer any questions. Thank you. All right. Um, we've got one public comment speaker, so we'll hear from them. If you all hang tight, Mr. Schaefer. My name is Fred Schaefer, general manager with uh, Aragon Development. We are uh, the appeal on both items seven and eight, uh, which have the same uh, fact pattern and uh, same request. So if it pleases the committee, uh, I'd like to address both of them uh, together. That's, uh, That's a separate that? item, Councilman. That's listed as number eight, but he is the appellant on the, the two Distinction items. Distinction without a difference. Yes. Yeah, so can we can uh, sure, we could can we can we consider seven and eight together? Could you sure. read eight into the record? So, Councilor, yes, I recommend the CLE read the matter into the record, and if staff has any additional um, introductory statements they need to make on the second item, they can do that at this time. Thank you so much. Well, item eight, Councilman. This is uh, again a report from the Board of this Building and Safety Commissioners and an appeal filed by Mr. Fred Schaefer. Um, it uh, um, involves again. 
the expectation of 8,790 cubic yards of earth for the adjacent property at 1315 through 1323 West Colton Street and CD1. Excellent. Thank you, Mr. Mejia. And is there anything additional? Uh, both were approved on the same day, and they share the same mitigated negative declaration. Excellent. Thank you. And if we could reset Mr. Schaefer's time to five minutes, and I'll ask you and everyone else uh, to forgive me my um, lack of procedural acumen and uh, proceed, with, uh, proceed with your testimony. Members of Plum, uh, thank you for hearing our appeal of the uh, Building and Safety Hall Rat approval. For, uh, the address is 1314 West Court Street and 1315 West Colton Street. Uh, our appeal is a request to modify one condition of the approval, uh, condition C1, uh, which would allow, and our request is to allow a start time of 7 a.m. instead of 9 a.m. for uh, truck hauling. Um, we'll adhere to the uh, 2 p.m. Uh, uh, completion time each day. The primary reason for the request is that the properties uh, which are across the street from each other uh, are in the LA oil field. Um, there was historic drilling activity on the properties. Neither property has ever been developed. We're proposing to build apartments on the properties. And along with our hauling is um, some uh, crude oil contaminated soil, up to 50% of the soil being uh, hauled away from each site has uh, some contamination associated with it. And because of that, uh, we've got to uh, haul the dirt about uh, 50 miles away, uh, so it becomes a 100-mile uh, round trip uh, for our trucks. And with the time uh, allocation that was given, 9 a.m. to 2 p.m., uh, our trucks can only make uh, two round trips per day. Um, we had originally estimated, uh, assuming three round trips per day, that our, our hauling for each site would take about a month. Uh, with only two round trips per day, it extends that by about uh, 50%. So for each site, it becomes about a six-week operation uh, rather than a four-week operation with trucks coming in and out uh, throughout the day. Um, and so our request is, is that we be allowed to start at 7 a.m., allowing us three round trips per day um, so that we can uh, limit the uh, time impact on the uh, neighboring uh, community and uh, streets uh, for our uh, haul trucks uh, to uh, be passing through. All right. Thank you. That completes your um, your testimony, uh, Mr. Steele. Yes, I'd urge uh, colleagues to uh, grant this appeal. This is uh, about a block from where I live. Uh, there's several developments taking place, and as you know, I live uh, not far from here. And the sooner we get started, the sooner we get done. It's just really simple math. Um, it's the route is close to the freeway exit and entrance, and so the sooner that they can get there sooner they're able to get out. Uh, near to my north is a, another development of 1,400 units. And again, the sooner that we can move these projects uh, into development, the, the sooner they get done, the sooner they get occupied, the sooner we get people off the streets. This has 10 units of um, a very low income housing uh, incorporated into the market rate. And so it's something that's urgently needed and we should act uh, in that manner. Excellent, thank you. Council members, uh, Adrian Corsani, City Attorney's Office. I believe staff had mentioned that the um, MND had analyzed the project with the hours that were approved. So um, I also note that this has a time limit of March 11th. If uh, the committee desires to consider granting the appeal, uh, I would suggest continuing this so that staff can look at the, uh, the MND again. I think that at least uh, we have to consider whether initial analysis needs to be done and what the if effect would be, since that is all before you. Okay. It's your pleasure on this, uh, Mr. Cedillo. Uh, I think uh, the sooner the better. I think we should move it. The fact of the matter is, is that they can go forward and, and reevaluate under circumstances, but I think that what it does is then provide them an opportunity to see if it's not working. Okay. Uh, so we have a motion um, for Mr. Cedillo. I'll second it. Um, hearing no objection, that'll be the order. And uh, we will go to item number 10. Mr. Chair. Thank you. Yes. Um, just for clarification, that was 
um, grant for both items seven and eight? Yes. Thank you. Um, item 10, Councilman, is interrelated with 11. Yes, if we could hear 10 and 11 together. Thank sure. you for so that. Item 10, Councilman, the, the appeal is filed uh, by Cree, the Coalition for Responsible Equi Equitable Economic Development. Item 10 relates to the appeal as to the MND and the vesting track map um, for the project. And item 11, uh, again, this is for the mixed use hotel project. And what they're appealing on 11 are the three land use entitlements and the MND. So we'll hear from staff on this matter. Good afternoon, Jason Hernandez with City Planning. On August 13, 2018, the vesting tentative track map was appealed by four aggrieved parties. At the City Planning Commission hearing held on November 8, 2018, the commission denied the vesting tentative track map appeals and approved the related City Planning Commission case. On December 17, 2018, at December 21, 2018, the Coalition for Responsible Equitable Economic Development, Creed, uh, filed appeals on both cases related to the proposed project. The appeal points related to the track map pertain to the adequacy of the MND, including project impacts related to noise and public health with regards to toxic air contaminants or TACs. There were no map specific appeal points submitted with this appeal application. The appeal points related to the City Planning Commission case pertain to the inadequacy of the findings for the master conditional use to allow for the sale and dispensing of alcohol the zoning administrative adjustment to the required setbacks and the site plan review. The city has adequately provided detailed and full responses to each of the appeal points supported by substantial evidence in the record in the MND circulated for public review on May 3rd, 2018 through June 7th, 2018 and the appeal and CPC staff recommendation reports both dated November 8th, 2018. Moreover, staff has provided the Plum Committee with an appeal response letter dated February 7th, 2019 summarizing and responding to the appeal points identified in the appeals filed on December 17th and December 21st, 2018. The appellant has failed to present any new information or substantial evidence to dispute the city's MND and findings for approval. Uh, we are available to answer any questions. Thank you so much. Uh, we have a few public comment speakers on this. Okay, so first we're going to hear from Mr. Bullock from CD13. What about the appellant? Good afternoon. My name is Craig Bullock, and I'm with Councilmember Mitch O'Farrell's office. I would first like to convey the council members' thanks and appreciation for continuing these items to today's meeting from the February 12th meeting. The council office is supportive of the requested entitlements and denial of the appeal. The project will redevelop an otherwise underutilized surface parking lot to construct an 11-story, nearly 200-room hotel. This will create construction and permanent jobs, generate revenue for the city, and expand tourism in Hollywood. In addition, the council office would like to add the additional voluntary conditions for the project's approval. The project site includes an existing 1930 Spanish colonial revival apartment complex, which is identified as a 3CS, meaning it would be eligible for the California Register as an individual property through survey evaluation. The preservation of identified and eligible resources is important to the council member. It is his intent to see that this eligible resource is preserved. As such, the conditions are as follows. Condition number one. Prior to the issuance of a building permit for any modification to the exterior and or interior of the existing apartment building, a historic preservation architect that meets the Secretary of the Interior's professional qualification standards shall be engaged to conduct a character-defining features analysis to record and document an historic preservation and maintenance plan, all original physical features that convey the historic significance of the exterior and interior of the apartment building as applicable. The consultant will also make recommendations for the appropriate treatment and continued maintenance of these features. The historic preservation and maintenance plan shall ensure that any exterior and or interior rehabilitation is planned to the extent feasible with a minimum loss of historic fabric and substantial compliance with the Secretary of the Interior standards for rehabilitation. 
the historic preservation architect shall reasonably consult with Hollywood Heritage regarding the historic preservation and maintenance plan and any interior or exterior rehabilitation plans for the apartment building shall be peer reviewed by Hollywood Heritage prior to any submittal to the Los Angeles Department of Building and Safety. Condition number two is that the ground floor trash room shall be fully enclosed and cooled at a temperature to minimize odors. And condition number three is prior to the issuance of a certificate of occupancy for this project, the applicant shall make a contribution of $150,000 to the Council District 13 Affordable Housing Trust Fund. Thank you for your consideration for these requests. Thank you. Thank you. So now we're here from our appellant. Appellant will have five minutes to speak. Nurit Lotan. Please forgive my mispronunciation if, in fact, that happened. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Godfrey Washira. Uh, <coughs> sorry. I was way off. Huh? Washira. <laughs> okay. Uh, good afternoon. Yeah, my name is Godfrey Washira, and I'm here on behalf of Creed LA. Uh, we are submitting a letter. I would like to submit a letter to the committee in response to the staff report, which discusses the two main issues the city should address before it can approve the project. And this include public health and noise impacts. Uh, we believe that these issues can be resolved and we are in the process of discussing potential mitigation measures with the applicant and we are hopeful that we will be able to resolve the issues prior to full council action on our appeal and on the project. Thank you. Thank you. You can hand your document. There, all right, I have um, two other um, public comment speakers. I'll give each of you uh, two minutes because you've signed up for 10 and 11. Uh, Gilbert Smith, Alfredo Hernandez, and Jacob Jarugi. Good afternoon, committee members and staff. I'm Gilbert Smith, and I'm president of the Ricardo Montalban Theater on Vine Street in Hollywood. And we have been witnessing a renaissance in Hollywood for a number of years now, and I'm pleased to be a part of it. I'm also a local resident, having been born on Homewood Avenue. The Schrader Hotel is elegant. It's going to create a new and inviting corridor with the other hotels that are being built in this corridor to complement our theaters, to complement the other businesses that are in Hollywood. Uh, the Netflix uh, uh, and the different uh, Columbia Square and office buildings need hospitality in order to complement their activities too. Entertainment is back. This is an attractive, beautiful hotel. I look forward to being there uh, as I am in other parts of Hollywood. And I look forward to having their residents and guests come to my theater. So thank you very much and I look forward to it being built. Thank, thank you. you. Good afternoon, council members. I am Alfredo Hernandez, chair of the Urban Policy Committee of the Hollywood Network Coalition a broad-based coalition of Hollywood residences, businesses, educational institutions, and nonprofit organizations. HNC's Urban Policy Committee reviewed this project at two meetings with the applicant's representatives. The applicant was easy to work with and incorporated our suggestions relating to the design, the northern facade, and LAPD con conditions. <clears throat> we were particularly impressed with the ground floor design an open space between the hotel and the apartment building directly adjacent to the hotel. HNC applauds the applicant for agreeing to preserve, restore, and rehabilitate the exterior of the apartment building to the Secretary of Interior Preservation Standards. On behalf of the Hollywood Network Coalition, I respectfully request that you approve this project. Thank, Thank you. you. Hello, my name is Jacob Howdigy. I'm the Business and Economic Development Manager at the Hollywood Chamber of Commerce. On behalf of the Chamber, and I'm here to express the Chamber support for the proposed 1600 Schrader Hotel project, the Chamber, the chamber believes that this project is a game changer for this neighborhood and will help to bring much needed hotel rooms to one of the most visited, visited parts of Los Angeles. We are particularly pleased with the project's proposed restoration of the two-story historic building on the north side of the property. The Chamber is also pleased with pedestrian friendly design elements and outdoor dining options. We believe this project will go a long way towards contributing to the walkability of the neighborhood. The project is a well served 
um, by transit increasing its accessibility for residents and tourists alike. As you know, Hollywood is undergoing an amazing renaissance. As Hollywood continues to grow at an unprecedented rate, the need for hotel rooms will also increase. For the past several years, the Chamber has been working to attract new hotels to Hollywood. With multiple nearby hotel projects also in the works, this neighborhood is emerging as a hospitality center providing much needed services for the thousands of visitors that travel to Hollywood, as well as their local residents who live, work, and play in the entertainment capital of the world. The Hollywood Chamber is proud to support the 1600 Trader Project and ask that the city move this project forward. Thank you. Thank you. All right, uh, we will now uh, hear from our applicant, Kira Tashima. Good afternoon, honorable council members. My name is Kira Tashima, land use council representing the applicant. I want to first thank the city planning staff, Jason Hernandez, as well as Mindy Dwin, and the council office for their work, great work on this project. Um, with regards to the land use and CEQA issues previously raised by the appellant, as you know, the city staff, as well as the applicant, has addressed all of these comments, and most recently, city staff has presented a thorough written response to the appeals in an appeal report dated February 7, 2019. In addition, Shepard Mullen, as well as the CEQA consultant for the project, provided written responses to the city dated February 7th, 2019. Um, as the um, appellant had mentioned, uh, we have been working closely with uh, the appellant and the parties have finalized terms of a labor agreement and are very close to execution of the agreement. So we are very eager to move the project forward. The applicant and its project team have worked tirelessly over the past two years to reach this point. Uh, the project has garnered support from local stakeholders and neighbors, including the following groups. Uh, the, neighborhood, uh, the Neighborhood Council, including their Planning and Land Use and Management Committee and Board. The Hollywood Chamber of Commerce, the Hollywood Network Coalition, the Schrader's Tenants Association, which is comprised of the residents who live in the um, existing apartment building on site, and the Hollywood Heritage. We respectfully request that the committee deny the appeals and approve the project and move the project forward to city council action. Um, we're available for any questions from the committee today as well. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, that exhausts our uh, public comment and our appellant and applicant. Are there any uh, comments or questions, members? All right. Um, so we have... Um, a recommendation from Mr. Bullock of uh, CD 13. 13 on this. Um, can you help us uh, by? Yes, uh, so, so the action councilman yes. would be uh, a denial of the appeal with modest, modified voluntary conditions. As okay. stated on the record by Mr. Bullock, and I believe it relates to conditions number one, conditions number two, and conditions number three. And if I could add just that your action is to sustain sustain the um, recommendation from the um, recommending body, which in this case was the CPC. Okay. Um, with the modifications introduced by Mr. Bullock. Okay. So, uh, so the motion is to sustain with the recommendations. All right. Um, hearing no objection, that'll be the order. Excellent. Um, so thank you all so much. That uh, leaves us with item number three, uh, which is a closed session item. Yes, you can read that into the record. Sure. Um, item three, Councilman, this is, uh, the, the instructions are that the committee may recess into closed session pursuant to government code section 54956.9D1 to confer with its legal counsel relative to the case entitled Concerned Citizens of Beverly Hills, Beverly Grove versus City of LA. Uh, this, is, this action is a challenge to the city's recently adopted home sharing ordinance. All right, so we're gonna clear the room.
like to adjourn? For the record, no action was taken during the closed session item. All right, we're adjourned. Thank you all so much. Thank you.